diesels have way too much of a lift. <clears throat> Ridiculous. It drops like a whole inch and a half or something. I don't know. I don't like it. Right now I'm just uh, uh, picking away at this cloth. I'm not going to spend much time on here because when it gets to be that time where uh, I advertise going live, I will not bore everybody with little hatches of white paint. Get on to something a little bit more exciting. It's kind of awkward painting around the camera. So I might have to do something about the position of the camera. I'm not sure I can paint like this. So like I was saying in the last lace sitting, I'm loosely copying what's up there, but it's not, it's not a faithful copy. It's going to be uh, some problem solving and it's going to just be, uh, you know, basically the pattern that I want really, it's going to be something where I figure out kind of the anatomy of it and kind of riff off of that instead of worrying about how many strokes I need to make this, you know, exact weave, you know, things like that. I, I think by the end of the day, if I get a realistic looking cloth, I'm good with that. Even if it's different. A lot of times what I find is if I start getting a little awkward in scale, then I can turn that into a ripple and I'll just create light and dark to uh, just kind of say that the cloth is hitting the light differently as it kind of gets in perspective. And then um, it'll start to work. At least it always has in the past. Maybe I'll have to trim some of them up by the end, but hopefully keep that minimum. Minimal.
So right now I have the camera really close to the painting and hopefully you can see the detail. It's making it really awkward for me to paint. I'm trying not to lean a certain way. I have to be pretty far away from the painting itself. So when it gets to be nine o'clock, which is pretty soon, then I'll go ahead and pull the camera back so that I can actually not be hindered by the setup, <laughs> by, the, by the camera. And so good news is you can see what I'm doing. Bad news is I can't paint to my optimal. <laughs> So this is going to get a little repetitive, I guess, but um, there's some things that I might want to adjust right now, and I'm going to purposely wait and just kind of see how the rest of the painting shakes out. And so part of it is that a lot of times when I get to the end of this pattern, I'm doing it the same way where it may not be exactly what I want yet, and I just have a wait and see. But a lot of times it just, I mean, what I thought looked bad before looks fine later, and I don't have to do anything. Sometimes it still looks bad, but uh, I can know exactly what to do with it now that I have more context to work with. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wait and see. Right now I'm just using one value. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to have to simultaneously think about, you know, changing, changing values while doing all this intricate drawing stuff. And so if I can just keep it flat for now and I'll wait and then I'll glaze some brighter areas with half paste and glaze some 
darker areas with glaze, and then I'll have light and shadow. And I've never had it not work, but you never know. You know, we're gonna always kind of look out for problem solves, things that I need to adjust. And, you know, not gonna worry about it. As much as possible, I'm going to avoid painting into the, the areas behind the, the cloth. I want to keep them pretty rich and I want them to feel like they're behind the cloth by the way the textures lie on top. It's a very subtle thing, but I think it's worth it. And again, I'm not going to panic if I miss and have to color mix that background and put it in. It won't be that big of a deal, but um, if I do that, then it's probably gonna be true that I'll, um, I'll paint it in and then I'll paint the edges of the cloth back. Hello. Hi, Oh, hey, hey, there you are. I didn't know who it was. I just hit admit. <laughs> uh, I was just kind of. I got. I got ready a little early, and then I had trouble with my laptop. I don't know what's going on with that yet. But, um, so I was just kind of killing time with. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to work on the apple and the, the, the cross tonight. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave the uh, basket with for a while. Yeah. Then maybe revisit it next time when I have everything else built in more. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. You know, I'll take yeah, breaks I from it. Well, it's still early. Yeah. And the, the, the basket wig doesn't look that bad when I look at it again. So I think. No, I, think I thought it was coming along well when you showed it to me last Saturday. Well, last Sunday, when I finished, I think some of the wigs doesn't make sense. So now I think it was actually not that bad. So yeah, I think I'm yeah. right. When well, I, I work on something like for a long time, just need to leave it there before. <laughs> well, okay, so when I when I was putting on all these kind of arcing lines, they they to me felt super clunky. But again, I kind of bit my tongue a little bit and I just thought, you know, when I do that next stage, I'll problem solve a little bit or it'll be fine. And it was, you know. <laughs> so sometimes just taking a break and getting a fresh eye helps, and then you know, building more context for you to make the next right decision helps too. So yeah, I think I'll uh, just uh, work on the apples first and uh, hopefully draw some big shapes of the lace. Okay. Yeah. I remember the lace that you were working on. It uh, the pattern was pretty big though, but you had you had a pretty tricky situation with seeing cloth behind the holes and sometimes and sometimes it was a big opening. Yeah. yeah so, so sure. yeah, well, the short answer on that is whether you actually see when you squint. So you'll be drawing the same pattern, but you'll have a, a lighter value behind it. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it's just a problem solve away. Sometimes you can put it in and just take a guess. And if that, if that whole opening is too, uh, if you have a cloth behind the whole opening and it's too bright or too much contrast, 
then a half paste will fix it. If it's too dark, then a glaze will fix it. Uh, so I, I reverse that completely. <laughs> but yeah, you get the point. <laughs> we can do push pull with uh, with the values with glazes, and you don't you don't have to get it right the first time, and you don't have to constantly get the uh, value. You know, constantly shifting as you do this delicate pattern. That's the way I like to do it. I like to just kind of just right now. All I'm doing is drawing. I have one value. One color, and I'm just hacking away. But I'm not going to bore everybody with the with the lace. I already had one extraordinarily boring sitting doing that. So I'm going to switch gears and get into the shells in a little bit. Might get into those dots of the urchin today. And well. It's not that big of an area when you think about it because when it gets into perspective, especially in the shadows, they kind of get pretty weak. It's really just these main ones right here in the middle that are really strong that I have to get right. Well, right isn't the right word. Believable. So unless I put my still life right next to the painting, which is a terrible idea, then uh, nobody would know. And then, same thing with the lace. It's like there's going to be sections where I feel like just aren't working. If I take a break from the painting and I come back, it's it's very possible that I'll like it a lot more than I thought I did. Yeah, that seems to be the case. But that happens a lot, I'd say. Yeah, I was talking about my last week, right? Yeah, well, I, I kind of just went back to that, yeah. Yeah, I think I didn't like it at all. And then yesterday when I looked at it again, it's not that. Right, yep, that happens, that happens pretty often, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, we're talking about not to be too discouraged. Well, I mean, you're, you're the, I think part of it is that you're in the struggle of painting. And so in your mind's eye, you kind of turn it negative instead of seeing it in reality. I don't know. That's one, one plus. If I get lost in the small area of the leaves, then actually it's not going to be as much as I want it to be. Right. So. The, the saving grace on lace tablecloth is that it's so much busyness that it's not any one area that stands out. It's just this overall pattern and how it interacts with itself. So even if one little area is a little off, it's hard to notice. Yep. All right, I better take a break from lace because I'm going to make everybody fall asleep. <laughs> Let me have anybody on YouTube. I don't know what's going on with my computer. It's kind of got me a little worried. <laughs> Just won't start up. So that's what I normally have on for YouTube, but I have another computer over here that is hooked up to this time. But I can't, it's not really in my visual eye shot. So yeah, I have no idea what's going on with my computer. I might take the battery out and try it again. It's, it says it's charging, it's not the battery. I don't know, I'm gonna. I, but it's not starting. <laughs> okay. So I turn it on and the power signal comes on like it's supposed to boot up, but it doesn't. And I can hold the button down and make it turn off, but it's not turning on. So I don't know. I really don't want to buy a computer right now. 
Ugh. Or, I mean, who does? <laughs> so, I'm not going to say I'm unique in that <laughs> department. Oh, great. I have to spend a bunch of money. I didn't want to. I mean, sometimes they just get old and it's like time. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I need to get the YouTube camera out of my way. Because I, I was painting really awkwardly around the camera. That's the, that's the problem with this other computer. It's like it's kind of far away. And the camera cord is pretty short. And I don't know what to do about it. Because I really don't want to spend the whole sitting painting around the cord. I have to bait it just saying, okay, I'm just going to record this sitting from the camp, from my phone, and then um, just not go live. Just because, I, again, it's just really awkward. I can't, when I have my laptop, I, I could get the cord really close and move it all around. Right now, I'm kind of wed to a spot that's like right in my way. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm not going to spend the whole time winding, I promise. <laughs> Oh, no, not the cell phone. The cell phone's fine. Fortunately. Although, I hope I just don't, didn't just jinx it. <laughs> well, ah! hey. Okay. I got a stable. I, this flimsy, I like, I bought this little tripod because it was nice and movable and lightweight, but it's flimsy. It took a nosedive and I'm missing a screw. I gotta find it. Because right now it's um, it's kind of just, the camera's getting clipped to the tripod with clips. And so if I bump it, it'll just go, it'll get loose and not be on the painting anymore. Hopefully not take a nosedive. Uh, we'll see. Make it work somehow. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of complaining. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it right now. Is that camera at a really weird angle for you, uh, Lujing? Uh, I think, yeah, I, I'm seeing it uh, in a, a regular way that you normally place. Oh, uh, not, not in a huge perspective? No. Okay. I don't know if I can get any closer without bumping the camera. Okay. I'm really far away. <laughs> Better. Now, how's the screen? Good? Uh, now I cannot see the shell on the left. You can't see the shell on the left. Uh, I can see it, but it's only part of that. Um, okay. So, maybe get the camera back a little. Okay, that's good. Uh, you can still put the pen here a bit far away from the camera. I can't really move forward, is the problem. Uh, I could only bring the painting closer to me. Uh, yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, that's but good. because my laptop, for some reason, isn't loading up, which is a bigger problem, but. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the uh, is good. At least I think the view is good. Um, let me, let me see, uh, how can you speak again? I can speak. Oh, there it is, okay. I know how. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks fine. I, I was telling uh, Lu Jing that uh, I have to paint this really awkward way because my laptop, for some reason, isn't booting up. Oh. And that's, I don't know, I'm trying to contain the little bit of freak out that's going on in my head because I use that a lot. But anyway, show must go on. But it's got me painting really awkwardly because I, I I have to have the camera plugged into my desktop and it's like at the very edge of how long that cord will stretch. So now I'm kind of awkwardly. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. 
That's good. All right, so I could keep working on this one. I'm more inclined to get this. I also want to maybe spend five minutes on the iridescence of the shell here. Should put some iridescence in that one too. might be keyed up a little high, which is stopping some of these nice subtle colors of coming through. And that's that's fine. It's it's not hard to adjust that because then I would just glaze the whole thing and then uh, punch the highlights back out. But I'm gonna try to just brighten them with little subtle greens and pinks and just see if I can't just get one step closer without having to do that. Because I didn't really want to be any darker than this. But I do want my highlights to stand out and I do want those iridescent colors. So I don't want to have to key it up to pure white because then pure white is dead. So it's just a little bit of a balancing act. Iridescence is really tough in that regard. I mean, just like any painting, all you gotta do is capture what you see when you squint. It's just a difficult, uh, task to get those nice colors in such a bright area. It's just going to take a little bit of push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. How's your basket coming along, Nishay? It was juggling, but it's not looking as bad as what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, let me turn on the camera and show you so you get a sense of. Okay. That's the basket. Oh, I like it. I, I think I still need to work on all of the details, but at least the, the shape is making sense. Yeah, I did like it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm now uh, switching gears to the apples again to hopefully get a better sense of how everything is going before I go to more details of the basket. Nice. Yeah, and that's yeah. a good strategy. I end up being a good one. Sometimes I end up with the final product that I don't like at all. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to put anything in the show? Uh, yeah, I have the rabbit pen here. I hopefully to put it online. Well, we have a judge now, and I'm just waiting for the judge to get me an image in his bio, and then I can put it on, I can finish the trifold, send that out, and do some advertising, but, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Is the online submission working now? Yes, it is. It is. And he said he did. Yeah. Yeah, I tried it today. It's working well on both the phone and the computer. Okay, that's good. It's too bright. So I just put a little tester down. Don't want that dot to be too bright. And I'm just going to mix, all I'm mixing right now is a little ochre, um, raw umber and uh, just a touch of sienna. So the first dot was too bright. That might be a little too subtle. So somewhere in between those two, I think is gonna be just right. So um, it's not just a matter of putting random dots. I, got, I just wanna see if like they get bigger to smaller or if they're perfectly in alignment or do they stagger. Uh, so it's not, yeah, like I said, I'm putting a little thought into it. And um, once I get a pattern going, I think it'll be easy. Just again, a bit of biz busy work. Should be pretty easy to draw too, just simply because those stripes that I put in in that previous sitting. 
kind of give a guideline for the dots to not fall right into place. Just like the lace tablecloth, you know, I'm going to reserve judgment on them. I'm not going to feel like I have to get them perfect right off the bat because the more I put down, the more it gets a busyness that might affect the way I see each one. And um, yeah, I just want to reserve judgment. That's getting a little bright. I'm going to tone that down a little bit. I do have the option after it dries to glaze it down just a tiny bit. And so just like on the lace, I don't really feel like changing values constantly. So I'm, I just kind of want to draw these on. And if I have to tweak it with glazes, so be it. You know, looking at the lace, it looks pretty good. It's getting there. I mean, there's a little inconsistency with the size of the holes. Like I said, I'll turn that into, you know, the bigger openings as part of its facing and then maybe turn it a little bit when it gets compact. Um, yeah, I, I did a section from about here to here today, like before the, before the session. Yeah, it looks really good. I, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna announce that I was gonna paint earlier, but then I got into that uh, computer debacle and I didn't know quite how much time I needed or if I could even solve the problem with the cameras and I was really inclined to just make this a private painting session just record it and then um, just not go live but then I changed my mind and I said nine o'clock so I've been painting for probably about 40 minutes I guess yeah I just got your um Text, if I hadn't looked at my phone, I'd be sound asleep. Well, you don't, yeah, don't feel like you have to watch. You can always hit the recording. I, I, I have to watch. Um, you have to. <laughs> I really am like addicted, which is not a good thing. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good. You need a 12 step program. <laughs> First step is to admit you have a problem with it. That's kind of my attitude on this too. It's like on Saturdays, it's like, it's been a long week. It's just like, you know, am I really up for this? And then the computer started giving me trouble. It's just like, am I really up for this tonight? But I don't know. Sometimes just having a, I, I really want to be consistent with Saturday nights for, for doing this, at least until it's done. And then I'll make up my mind if that's going to be a permanent demo day. But for this painting, yeah, I definitely want to be consistent. And um, yeah, a lot of times I just don't feel like it. I feel like I've, I've said that a lot on these, on these uh, videos, so I better stop saying it. But, like I, I, I was actually in a pretty decent mood for painting today. It's just the computer kind of got me a little derailed. Yeah, what do you that's, think is going on? That's a big deal. I use that computer a lot. Uh, I mean, I can tell you exactly what's happening. It's charging because I can see the little charging light on it. The power button is turning on, but the screen isn't, and I don't know what's going on. Um, I might just take out the battery and, and, and put it back in and see what happens. But yeah, have you thought about um, maybe connecting it to a projector just to see if if it's still working, but it's just your screen. Well, I mean, I mean, I suppose I could. Well, how would I do that? I mean, what do I have to project it with? I, um, I have a projector. Yeah. We'll I, mean, I, don't, I know you don't want to wait till Thursday, but, um. Yeah, I won't, I won't be at the school until Wednesday. Yeah, no, I mean, until Wednesday. Yeah, uh, well, let's see what happens when I take the battery out and put it back in. Okay. Yeah, I, um, what kind of computer is it? It's a uh, HP. Okay. You know, it's been working fine. It was working fine. Did I even open it today? I don't, I didn't open it today, but it was working fine yesterday. Does it make the usual sounds, you know, like whatever it's supposed to do? Not, not really. It doesn't. 
Yeah. I don't know. It's off right now. And I can tell that it's it's plugged into the wall. It's getting battery. Because there's a tiny little light that, that's on when it's charging. What's that? Oh, Saturday class? Yeah, I ate. Mary Catherine is there um, making up a night school. So that's. Everyone else is a paying student. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't treat her any different, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you mentioned her because I, I didn't remember her name. And um, now, now you just remind me. Thank you. Yeah, I hadn't seen her in a while. I used to teach her for night school. For a while there, she and her brother were doing Saturday class, but I really haven't taught. I've taught part of two night schools online just because normally, you know, I'm, I'm in the, you know, getting the kids to bed and stuff. But yeah, I haven't really taught night school this year. Which is funny because this is this is this year summer night school has been hopping. It really has. Um, although usually, um, you know, it's Kyle, Juliana, Genesis, and me, and sometimes Malika. Okay, so, so yeah. But there are still a lot of other people that come that I don't so, really know that well, but. Um, so not very many paying students, just deadbeats from day school. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Our prize students getting their bonus painting time. I love it. I did that too. I I went to almost every night school in Saturday. Well, Saturday class is mine. There was no Saturday class before I started it, but um, I did. Uh, I did all the night schools, and I set up the models up on the night sessions in painter. You know. Those open sessions with my grandmother. Oh, that's so nice. So I tried to get as much out of it. And then later, after I graduated, we started the Saturday classes. So I was getting practice there too. But. It really helps to do that because for me, on those night classes at least, I can work on something else that's like an open studio. Yeah, well, you can definitely make up for the classes that you haven't, you know, been able to attend or, um, all right, go on, I interrupt you, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's all. It's just nice to be able to work on something else that, you know, you think you might need practice with. Yeah, yeah, if you're struggling with any one subject, that's a great opportunity. You know, I'm trying to do that echo shape, which I, haven't had much time to work on, but that's my Tuesday night project. Yeah, Kyle thinks there's a way of breathing life into that clay that dried. I don't know. That thing is rock hard. I'd love Are to work on. No, I my ecrochet that I never got to finish because it dried. I just got started on other projects and then I put it aside for a while. When I wanted to get back to it, it was like. If you try to move it at all, it would just crumble and you couldn't add to it. So it was just like, okay, well, that's done. It is looking really good, though, for what you did. The Ecrochet? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I started that with Robert Liberace, but it was mostly independent study from a model. I didn't get a whole lot of critique. I, I don't want to say anything badly about him. He's a great teacher. It's just that place. That um, that workshop was like ninety percent people that didn't know how to sculpt, and that's where all of this attention had to go. Yeah, I, that happens in a lot of workshops. 
whether they're related or not. You know, just the wrong people are there sometimes. Well, that that really should have been a prerequisite, but it wasn't. And that place was packed. There was like forty students or something for one teacher. Oh, that's too many. And uh, his demos were great. It's quite Did a sculpture. Oh, I'm sorry, Liz. I I look at it all the time thinking, hey, I gotta watch that. Maybe I'll watch it. I know. Uh, it's gonna be late tonight. Maybe I'll watch it tomorrow. I got some laundry I've gotta fold. It's really, really a long video though. And it's a pretty dry subject, but yeah, I want to. Yeah, I think I have another one that I um it's not the same one, it's a different one. I think it's on hands and feet. But I haven't watched that one either, so Um, yeah, I, I, if I don't watch it soon, I'll bring it into the school. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. No one's asking for it. It's, <laughs> I've been having like a, a running gag with uh, Lillian from my salary class. You know her, the French lady? French lady Lillian from Saturday? Saturday class, yeah. Well, you don't come to Saturday class too much. But, uh, tell me where she, where she sits. She sits kind of where I do my broadcasting for Friday nights and uh, Oh yeah, the lady, the two ladies that come together. The two ladies, one of them's yeah, French, yeah. the French lady is Lillian. Well, she brought me a painting to frame and it's been like three weeks in a row. I was like, did you do my painting? I was like, no. <laughs> uh -huh. But I have a good excuse for this last week. The, the frame shop flooded. Right, right. Yeah. It needed time to air out before I could set anything back up. So this time I have a decent excuse. The other one's not so much. So this is getting really regimented. So I'm going to take a small break to add some chaos in here. Because um, that is kind of like what I see. And it's just in between. It's less of a pattern. So that's why I just kind of did the more predictable stuff first. Because it's not an even stagger, it's it's weird. And then I put the little dots on the inside of those dots. And then, you know, again, just readjust. Might need some glazes after the fact, because again, I'm not constantly changing my uh, colors and value. If I if I glaze it, then it, it'll create the turn for me without all that specificity on this sitting. This sitting would be so nice if I can just put dots, not even worry about it. So that is what I'm doing. And if I don't have the right count of dots, I am pretty sure this urchin shell will forgive me. Now, whether you all do. I'm not sure. Where's the moss stick? The moss stick of doom? Yeah. I, I've left that at the school. Okay. Well, because I don't want to do my demos without it. Right, right. Isn't it spectacular? It is spectacular. It really is. So I'm, I'm just constantly thinking about ways to update it, like get it to be this kind of growing monster of a mall stick. Like with the horns? The horns would be a cool idea, but then I'd have to destroy the 3D print of the uh, longhorn. Maybe you can find other horns somewhere. Or sculpt them or something. But That's a good solution. Yeah. Thought about sculpting them. But What, the uh, Mossick? Mm -hmm. No, she didn't think of that. Yeah, she did. She, she did it, but I've been talking about using that skull as a Mossick. I've been saying it out loud for a long time. That's true. You have been saying that, but I mean, she made it happen. She took the initiative, which is exactly what needed to happen for it to get done. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been all talk. <laughs> Just because how, how can that make a take a priority over all the other things I got to do? So I'm glad she did it. <laughs> yeah. It kind of helped her, but she's the one that acted. 
Good. Well, much appreciated. And the, uh, yeah, I like the idea of it being able to hook over the edge of the canvas. It's really an awesome, awesome. That is a, that is a Richard Schmidt idea. Because he had to walk with a cane, he could just hook it over the edge of the canvas. I remember that, um, because I saw a video of him using it like that. That, that is a good idea. Hmm. I'm wondering if this is getting too regimented. I think it kind of is. What do I want to do about it? There's another question. Right, I'm going to keep going. Just like I was saying with the lace, I'm not terribly happy with the pattern yet, and I'm going to reserve the need to do anything about it until I get more, and then I can at least come up with a scheme of what I actually do want now that I'll have more to compare it to. So, again, just not, not feeling it yet. It's just looking a little too regular. But again, you know, I get this stuff in perspective and I put the dots on the inside and maybe it'll look a lot better. So I'm reserving, I'm reserving that. So this area is kind of neat because they're like double dots. It's not like this kind of row of dots. It's, they're kind of connected right next to each other. And then there gets to be triple dots. So that will look chaotic. And that, I mean, not chaotic, but um, different than this. So like I said, it, it's, it might just need more to make sense. And like I said, that this is all way too bright as it starts to arc. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna fix that with a glaze. Well, not not fix. You know what I mean. Yep. Elaborate. As bright as these dots look, they're actually much darker than white. But you're not using white, right? I mean, white's part of the mix, but it's not white. Yeah. I mean, if I put white down, it would it would look very bright against the lace. This this wouldn't show up too well. This is pretty bright, but pure white will show up against that very slight pink. Pure white would show up in here as a highlight, big time. You know, so it's it's not it's not quite as bright as it looks. There's no context yet, so just needs a steady dose of patience. <laughs> Oh, I meant to, I meant to contact a lot more people. I got, I got into that computer nonsense and kind of got in scramble mode. I tried to restart that computer so many times. Not working. And that is very troublesome. You know what else I found about, um, this stage of the painting is that there's a lot of oil mixed in with these dots and they look kind of opaque right now, but I found that sometimes they get just a little bit thinner as they dry or not thinner, but uh, more translucent. And that'll be a really good thing because that'll make them turn a little bit more. I didn't want them too transparent, but it might be just transparent enough to for the value to shift. But again, I'm, I'm intentionally keeping it flat right now, just for the sake of uh, just being able to draw and not have to shift the values all the time. So I'm getting into a tricky part of this in that I'm going to start getting in perspective. 
where all the pattern starts getting thinner, being smaller in distance, but also overlapping each other more. And then as I get down here, each dot gets a little cast shadow. So it's gonna get it's gonna get trickier. I've started kind of in the easy spot. If there is such a thing. It's all relative. That's really awkward. Exciting stuff, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. About as exciting as some watching somebody put dots on a painting. <laughs> It's not going to look great on this suit. It's not intended to. So that, that's the other part of it. Not only is it really monotonous and slow, but it's going to look pretty flat by design, by my strategy for painting this. And so it might even start to look worse and better because this was looking nice and round. But these dots are, uh, I don't know, part of the cool part about this shell. And this painting is all about texture, texture everywhere. And so this is just more of more of that texture idea. Everyone thought I was sparing them from the monotony of lace tablecloth. Ha ha ha, jokes on them. So these dots are intentionally getting smaller. They're going to start getting really nondescript. I'm just going to get to be a suggestion. If I pull it off well, I'm hoping I will. That seems too curved. Maybe. Miss, were you there when I was in the high school? Um, when was that? The typical pandemic? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't check about who was my classmate. But I remember seeing you. I, I remember. Yeah, I think I've seen you, but I forgot in which class. Yeah, maybe. Were you ever there on a Saturday? Yes, yes. Sometimes Saturday, sometimes the night school. Yeah, I, I remember meeting you, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but Liz, you didn't do yeah. a whole lot in high school. Or Saturday class. But I was going to say, Liz hasn't really been a part of the Saturday class. But once in a while I've come in when I've had, um, you know, like a anatomy project or something. Oh, uh, you're always welcome, of course. Just trying to think of how you would uh, interact yeah, with the I'm usually not there on a Saturday, but if I needed help, I may have come in, uh, you know, just a few times anyway. And I think I'm pretty sure I met you, Bouchet. Yeah, that's why I do, but I forgot when. <laughs> yeah, it was probably in the very beginning of the pandemic because that's when I started school. Yeah, because I also went to the class maybe after the pandemic very briefly, then I moved to Boston. 
Yeah, that's what Hans said. Well, it's great that we can teach online like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, that was good. If you had to draw anything positive out of COVID, I guess. <laughs> I think that was underway anyway, but that really put the, the pedal, you know, foot on the pedal for yeah. like online instruction and. Yeah, I was too. I um, can't say I'm the most tech savvy person, but you know, whether you get there awkwardly or not, it's still the same fundamentals. Instead of using the real hands, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say usually that um, you know, going to the school has really exceeded my expectations. Yeah, you need a rescue from those. <laughs> you need definitely need an outlet. <laughs> school provided sanity for somebody. <laughs> That's not what we're known for. <laughs> sanity is definitely not what we're known for. <laughs> so again, I'm trying to do the probably broader patterns and then I'm going to fill in the more chaotic stuff in the middle. It's, it's kind of an interesting mix of um, very stripy dots and then very not stripy dots. And I like the word stripy. But I'm also trying to simultaneously think of diminishing the sizes and, you know, uh, distorting them a little bit. So like, when I look at this, the, it's, it's hard to even tell the dots are happening over here as it turns the edge, but near the opening, you get a good feel for it. So if I establish these zones that I can kind of find the gaps in between, I think that'd be a good strategy. We'll see. I think I've painted one of these before, but I can't remember what painting it would be. But like I said, these dots are going to be flat, only in that I don't feel like changing the value constantly. I'd much rather just get it in and uh, adjust later.
Okay. It's just a little bit big for that square. Oh yeah. Is there like a brown paper I can put behind it or a mat or something? I don't think that's a good idea. Um, the painting is too small for the frame? Just a little. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Uh, and it, you can't move it around until it does fit? No. I, I've never been able to crack that code. I don't think it's ever been worth it. And so, um, yeah, you might just have to do a custom frame or... When it's too small, that's easy. You can just cut the painting a little bit. Right. And um, that's not the case here. Yeah, I, I've always had trouble. And believe me, I've tried many times to make it work. It just hasn't been worth it. Almost like in prison here between cameras. <laughs> Are you on YouTube also? I'm on YouTube also, but I had to plug it into my laptop, or I mean to my desktop. And um, it's just really awkward. I've got the camera like right in front of me. I'm kind of painting around it, I'm, like boxed in. Which doesn't freak me out or anything, I just can't paint very well. But fortunately, I'm just kind of doing a million dots. It, it does, this does take a lot of concentration because I don't want the, I, I do want the dots to be, you know, wrapping around this rounded form and I don't want them to be too regimented. So I've put in the parts that kind of are regimented and I'm going to figure out the busyness in between, kind of like I was doing with this one. There are little patterns that you can glom onto. Like, are these dots smaller than the other ones? Or are they in an odd pattern? Like, this, this pattern is the idea of what I see. It's just not exact. I don't feel like I need to have exact. In here, it's tricky because the pattern practically disappears. So I don't really need these dots. And that's why I smudged it a little bit. I just kind of got it a little cloudy in my uh, shadows. I didn't like that. So I'm going to glaze it all anyway. So if these get well, I mean, not if. They are too bright. But it'll only look bad until it dries, and then I'll change it pretty fast. This might not be a full sitting. We'll see. I'm really eager to try to get that battery out of my computer, see if I can get it working again. But for now, I'll just have to be really annoyed with the camera, like right in my face. Um, it would have to be a USB extension cord. 
which I might have somewhere in my house, but I don't want to look for it. Then I, well, if I was going to get started at all recording at all, it, like I, I wouldn't want it any later than nine. Yeah, no, I understand. Okay. And then um, I spent almost all the time messing with the computer. And the only reason I got started early, like with that lace, is just because I've, I've been like, okay, uh, I don't know what's going on. I can't keep trying the same things over and over again. I'm just going to get started. But I, I really had no expectation of when I could actually get started or if it was a good idea to record at all. And I almost made the choice not to. But I don't. I, I don't want to make any. I don't want to make any marks in this painting without recording. But whether I go live or not, I don't know. But it's just. It's just so awkward. Just feeling trapped between the cell phone and the camera for YouTube, and just like in this little cage. It's making it really awkward, and I like my thumbnail too. So. <laughs> Well, I had I had one YouTuber. Now they're gone. I'm probably just looking at a million dots, thinking, "Oh my gosh, I can't do this." <laughs> the camera angle is a little funny on YouTube, anyway. But like I said, it's it's about as close as I can get it, and it's still not good for me. So. A little bit of compromise on both sides. So like I said, I don't really want to change my color or value. This is getting way too bright for this area. And I just know it is. And um, I'm going to reglaze all those shadows. I might even do the red stripes again. It'll be easier because I, I don't really have to figure anything out. It's just got to make them turn the dots more. But one thing that I can do on this sitting, just take a paint rag, not drag, but dab. If I dab, it's going to make the paint more translucent. And so the shadow will come through more. But if I, if I get too cute with it, if I try to drag it all, or if I just keep dabbing the same spot on the rag, then I'll start spreading the paint. It's exactly what I don't want to do. So, if you don't like risking ruining your paintings, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> no, there's not that much risk. Again, if I, if I don't like what I'm doing right now, then I just wipe it off and I do 20 more dots, and then I'm right back to where I was. But all this practically has to disappear, and I don't really need to put dots in there right now, but um, I think they'll look good after I uh, have to uh, glaze. And if they don't, I know how to problem solve. Instagram picture from, I guess, the time before, and I'm looking at that shell. That's, that's pretty cool. What, the urchin shell? Yeah. And I see, you know, the dots, how they are. Yeah. You see how some of these are really in a row, but some of them get a little bit yeah. weird in between. And so I'm trying not to make it too regimented. I'm trying to only put in the regimented ones that I see, and then I'm going to mix it up. Yeah, it looks like in the one area that it's got a dark behind the dots. Yeah, no, but a lot of them even have little dot, uh, little dark specks in the middle of the dots. So I'm going to put that in. Right now, all I'm doing is designing. And when you get to the side, each one of these little dots casts a shadow. But again, if, if I was worried about that too early, then I'm gonna make no, I'm gonna make hardly any progress. It would just be constantly going back and forth between changing the value, doing light and then cast shadow, light and then cast shadow, which it probably, you know, 
it would look good. It would just be super, super slow. And um, I just really don't want to do it that way. So it's a conscious choice what I'm doing to make flat uh, values that are going to be too bright in a lot of areas. But I, I like the idea of just drawing away and not worrying about too much. And the idea that I'm just going to wipe off areas that just, they don't work. And so I like having that dry painting underneath. I like not having to protect anything. And if I was constantly shifting the values, I'd have to be really careful with what I erase. So this is, this is where making it temporarily flat is a good thing because of just all the side benefits it gives me. So the lace, the lace is going in flat, the dots are going in flat, and um, little glazes will, will bring the three-dimensional turn back into it. And so I'm pretty sure that'll work. And if it don't, I'll be okay. I'll figure it out. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just fundamentals. And with oils, you can just keep going over layers and layers and layers. There's really little risk. The problem solves may seem daunting until you do them, and then you can stand back from your painting most of the time and think, you know, that wasn't so bad. And as much as I say I'm never going to do lace tablecloth again, it's really not that bad. It's just busy and boring which I can't, I can't really sugarcoat that. It just is. <laughs> you know, especially live, you know, there's only so much you can say about it as you do your 1,000th little hash. And I'm sure in the last one, I was just repeating myself over and over again, just because I feel like I, I have to at least say something. You can't just have dead time. But there's only so much you can say. You're just doing little hatches. You know? And I was explaining on how, like, there's some things that weren't working and I'm going to keep going forward. All that's really great advice, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just not a whole lot to say. Yeah, I'm going to guess same thing with dots. So, this, this is just the setup work for the next sitting. And then I could get into something else. I could work up those a little bit. You know, on the end of last sitting, I started messing with the background and I was a little disappointed that it started turning purple. And when I came back to the painting, when it dried, I was like, yeah, that doesn't look so bad. So, I mean, that happens a lot, I think. We're, we're judging things in the moment, and then when you get back to it with a fresh eye, you know, a lot of times it's better than you think. Did you say purple? That's a bit, that's kind of like a lavender-y color right there. Okay. Maybe it's not coming through in the camera. I think it does a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, when you did the, the painting last week, I think when it's wet, it somehow looks a little purple. I think it did settle in a bit. I don't think I did much to it after that sit after the recording. All I did was kind of just put away my paints. <laughs> I didn't really paint. What's going on here? This is bumpiness. Oh, I lost my half paste. I have to give that a light sanding. I don't know what's going on with this kind of pebbly texture. Yep. Okay. So much, so much tiny little details to do. We'll get there. And then I'll have to do a bunch of loose paintings. Yeah, not just Alaprimos, really, really kind of choppy, 
loose pressure free ones. That'd be great. I think I did that the last time too. Like I did the lace tablecloth, and I was like, oh man, I'm just gonna let loose for a bit. <laughs> There are some people that only want to paint this way. And I guess galleries love that because they want to sell a brand. I just can't do it. I like, I, I want to do these paintings just to, just cause you know, they're impressive enough and people do want to know how to do tight paintings. Really not my favorite. That's what I like about minis so much. Minis take all this little pesky, tiny brushwork. And then you can't sell it for a gob of money like I'm going to do this one. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's going to have to be on the upper end of this size painting for me, but I don't know, I'm not going to overcharge either. It's just a lot of work. And a lot of it is not the fun stuff. The fun stuff is for me is problem solving. And I'm doing some of it, but when it starts getting routine, like the lace, that's just busy. That's not, that's not thinking. That's just painting. So the thinking part is my favorite part. When you have to just figure out something that's just really tricky. But I've done a lot of lace. I've done all this problem solving before. Right now, it's less of like any sort of nervousness that it's not going to work. That's just not there anymore. So I've done it so many times. And um, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's going to be hours and hours of tiny little hatches. <laughs> oh, what was that? There's a like glob of red paint there. I don't know how that happened. <sighs> yeah. This might have to be a shorter one. That's okay. I was yawning like crazy last Saturday. I think after you left. It was just nonstop. It's like yawn, 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 yawn. Oh, you mean today? No, last Saturday. Oh, no. Last, uh, last Saturday when I was painting on, uh, what did I paint on? I painted on this a lot last time. Painted the background. That was Sunday, wasn't it? That was Sunday. You're right. That's right. That's right. I didn't, uh, I didn't paint on Saturday last week. Because I was in That must have been the reason. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I painted on Sunday instead. No. See, this, this right now is getting a little, I don't know, too even. I'm going to wipe it out. Really? That's what I was, what, that was what I was worried about. All the dots are evenly spaced and the same size, and I don't like it. But it's just that easy to get rid of. And that, again, that's, that's why I don't want to constantly shift values. I, I don't want to hesitate to do the right choice. And I, I would still do it. If it weren't working, I would still do that. If I was constantly shifting the values and making sure that I, you know, adhere to that three-dimensional form but it would come at the expense of a lot of hard work and so that that right there never really feels good but if you think about the alternative if i if i'd have done all that specificity of changing the values constantly yeah that would have been really disappointing Those are not best practices. Those are just little tricks. And they may not be for everybody. Like this idea that I'm going to paint it flat. Or, you know, 
or the idea that I'm just kind of making my own pattern loosely based off what I see. The reason it'd be hard for beginners to do what I'm doing is that you have to be able to see it in your mind's eye. Only experience can give you that. I mean, something about really good imaginations, but that's not even it. It's, it's technique. It's like when I do this next step, it's going to do this. The ones that don't form this regimented strip of dots, those are smaller dots. These major stripes that I've started with, those are bigger dots than the ones that get outside of those tracks. Not sure the viewer would expect that. So I'm not sure I really have to adhere to that. I just know that they're not all completely even. Like they're not all like evenly spaced and the same negative shape in between. And that's what was happening. That's why I wanted to wipe out. Which I think is helpful to see. If everything went super well, that I think that'd be rare for one. And for two, you wouldn't see that the, the people that do all these intricate paintings, I mean, maybe it always goes smoothly for them. It doesn't for me. I, I figure things out as I go and I problem solve. If I have to undo a little section to redo it, you know, I'm perfectly fine with that. In fact, you know, I told you about that sergeant um, little PDF that I have. Did you read that one? Yeah. I did. I, I think I read. I think I read it all, but I remember reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was that was saying. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. That was saying that he he repainted the whole sections over and over and over again because he wasn't happy with them. So he'd scrape them off. And he'd do it again. And scrape them off and do it again. You just think of somebody as just incredible as Sergeant who's doing that, you know, somebody who's who's filling out whole sketchbooks at age five. You know. Although his, his ascension wasn't easy. He got rejected from the Ecole de Beaux Arts. That's why he studied with Durant. Because he got rejected from uh, the academy. I think we saw a portrait at the portrait gallery mm -hmm. that he did that, in our um, opinion, was not that great. No. But, you know, I, it, it's still better than anything I could do, but, <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, I find that to be generally true. I mean, I, I think that's good. Everyone's going to, okay, so everyone's going to have their scale for one. Even, you know, the, if you hold it all up to a sergeant standard, then some of them have to be lesser. You know, <laughs> it's just, it just had to be. But... Also, too, is you have to ask yourself, was that meant to be on display or did they just say, hey, this is a sergeant, we're going to show it. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe some people like it more than others. Yeah, I think the problem with it was that there was a lot of, a lot of haloing. Haloing. And, um, maybe it was just the lights that they hung in it or I, I just don't know. But I think it's good because um, I don't think of Sergeant's work as having 
particularly halo effect. I'm gonna have to ask Karen. Um, no, I believe you. It's just that's that's odd to me. Yeah, that's why it was odd to us too. Maybe a restorer got a hold of it. Maybe, maybe. Those people. Those people. Lurking in the corners with their brush brushes in hand, yeah. waiting to put their personal stamp on a sergeant. <laughs> no, actually, restorers are trained to, to be pretty invisible. The good ones, at least. The Rembrandts in the National, though, oh my gosh. They got, they got destroyed. Are they still hanging? I haven't been to the National in a while. But they, they had like all their glazes removed and the restoration to fix it didn't go so well, I don't think. I talked to David about it. He completely agreed. And he was a, I think he was a guard there at one point. Yeah, he, he said that. Yeah, I imagine it's really difficult to Restore a, you know, 17th century painting. I would say it's totally nerve-wracking. Well, yeah, no. So I, I don't want to. I don't want to insult anybody. I just think those Rembrandts don't. They don't have some of their Rembrandt qualities. Let's put it that way. So I would say that was a restoration that didn't go well. So this is starting to get busier. It's starting to look better. Oh, yeah. You can see that I'm jumping around the sections. All this needs to be glazed. I might put some of the striping back in and then have to redo some of those dots. Or be super careful in putting them back. I don't know what's better, a better strategy, but I'll think about it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's coming along. I think when I get all that busyness in it, like putting those little black, not black, but like little gray dots in the middle of the more prominent uh, dots and then the cast shadows and the glazed, uh, you know, turning area, I think it'll really work. And if not, it'll just be a little, little touch away. It's hard to believe that those little dots I mean, they're already tiny. Then they have cast shadows and all of that. Yeah. I don't need every single detail to pull it off. But it would be nice when it... It's not turning. It would be nice that when it um, gets into the shadow area, we would see that they're three-dimensional dots. You're not going to get that feel when it's coming right at you. But when it starts transitioning into shadow, if it has any sort of volume at all, it's going to cast a little bit of shadow. So I think that'd be worth it. Like sometimes you can decide if, if you don't see it when you squint, is it worth it doing it? I'd say in that case, definitely. And so um, when I squint, all of this comes together. So I, I wanted to do that when I squint in my painting, but I think the cast shadows would definitely be worth it. And the uh, those little dots in the middle of these dots, I think, will be totally worth it. Even though, yeah, I, with you, I would think they're they're hard to put in because they're so small already. Yeah, I think it'll be. I think it'll be easy to do when the paint's dry. I don't think it'd be easy to do wet in the wet. What kind of a um. I mean, I know you have to have a really fine detail brush. And this isn't a small brush, it just has a nice point. Okay. It's just a round uh, synthetic probably a nylon. I don't know what hair exactly, but it feels like a nylon.
I like synthetic hairs uh, for everything except for the very beginning. I like a good natural hog, uh, hog bristle for the start. Really can scrub that those early layers down quite aggressively. The nice thick hair. But I like my middle block in, and I really like synthetic mongoose for the middle block in. And uh, some of those some of those synthetics are just fine for that. What? Said that, sounds so funny. that was the band name. Yeah. Remember when I was racking my brain, I couldn't come up with the that time where I was like, oh, that'd make a funny band name, and then somebody looked it up and it actually was? It was Synthetic yeah. Mongoose. It's funny. Must have been an artist. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> they like their monarchs. Rosemary has a synthetic mongoose. Um, I think Princeton has a synthetic mongoose too. But Monarch is the brand name that Winsor Newton uses for their synthetic mongoose, and they're really good. Nice and soft, but not not super soft. They still hold a body of paint. Like the detail brushes are super soft. You wouldn't want to block in big areas with that. Well. I guess some people would, but I don't. I can do it. I, I really don't like rounds. I not even the big rounds for, for big blocking. It's just the shape doesn't work for me. I like flats, but that really gives it a style note that I might not always want. Filberts, I can do anything. I can do a fine line, I can do a mass, I can paint loose, I can paint tight. So I like a nice filbert for at least three quarters of the paint. Then I might switch to rounds for small small rounds. But I, I like uh yeah. I like that sequence a lot. Big bristles for the block in, filbert shaped. And then uh, smaller filberts, usually the synthetic mongoose is perfect, but I don't always have that. And then, um, you know, nylon's fine, tack one. Then, um, then rounds, soft rounds. I, I don't, I don't go very high quality for the rounds just because even high quality ones, if you don't treat them perfectly, then they're going to splay on you anyway. So I usually have pretty cheapo detail brushes. Bath was super particular. Like I could spend a half an hour looking at individual hairs. I was gonna buy her a brush. Yeah. Hey, those hairs had to be perfect. Not that she was extra picky. I mean, it's good to be picky when you have a very specific, you know, way of painting. But uh, it was because on miniature, you know, hers were even miniature among miniatures. Like one hair being off makes a big deal. So I'm not picking on her. It was for those, you know, very specific portraits of dogs that had to be embedded in jewelry. Tiny, tiny, tiny paintings. So it totally made sense, I, you know. Yeah, her detail was incredible. It's incredible, I should say. <laughs> I know what you meant. This needs to turn more, but you know, it could just disappear. Go on, go on. There are little canals in the dots. And I don't want to lose them all. I don't want to make everything dots. I 
just want to be able to pause enough to not fill those in. It would be really easy to just get in dot mode and totally lose your shape. But the we were talking earlier about cast shadows on these. Really, that's just a dark dot next to a light dot. Once the light dots are in there, I already I already know exactly where to put them. So I'm, I'm not really worried about that. I have done the searching before. What painting was it though? I have to look at my old paintings. I remember doing this. Oh, I gotta talk to him. Last I spoke to him was Tuesday. And he said it was getting better. That's good. But yeah, I should call him again. I wouldn't want to go through that. Oh, that's for sure. No. Looked horrible. <laughs> it looked really bad. I mean, he, those are his words too. I, I'm not trying to insult him or anything. It just looked really bad. His, his eye looked almost black. It was so red. It was like a deep red. No white of the eye. He said he's starting to get his sclera back. It's it's just looking like pink instead of white. But oh yeah. Trouble seeing? No, he was saying that it felt like there was like a grit in his eye. Oh, so the that. so the texture was bad, but he could see. That's yeah, good. he didn't lose his vision. But um, I'm sure it was plenty uncomfortable. It'd be nerve-wracking, especially if you use your eyes like we do. Um, you know, he's retired. He doesn't. He doesn't have to do oral surgery anymore. But I'm sure he wants his eyesight. Yeah, of course. That I can be pretty confident of. All right. Um, Is it working? I think the dots are going from bigger to smaller. The canals that are leaving in there, I feel like I might have to bring some more back. I can get rid of that row completely. Let's use a nice stiff filbert for that. Get rid of that line right there. I might have to Let's see. Hold that thought for a second. That's better. Yeah, I bet when I put the cast shadows and the dots on, it'll look better. But it's it's kind of working. I might even just take a visual break from it for a little bit, and I'm sure that would be good for everyone else anyway, because this is boring. Okay. Yeah, break. Definitely break. Okay. Uh, what time is it? Yeah. Okay, it's ten thirty-one. Ten thirty-one. <sighs> Can't see my setup if I do that. 
something shifted in my painting where I'm not seeing that webbing of light anymore. And that's kind of a big deal for me. Yeah. I remember when I was blocking in the lace, the tablecloth was so skewed that I, I tried to kind of undistort it in my mind's eye and while I was painting and that didn't work. And then I actually, actually, uh, shifted the the tablecloth well, that that really disturbed it a lot you know not complaining i'm just saying like that that was a little important sequence to me so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to shift that one around um you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna work on this this weave right through here I could, you know, what I could do. I could do another sitting on this too. It's just um, kind of pull it together a little bit because there's uh, these little ribs that I want to get, and these these little red stripes. And I think those would be really neat too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a very light glaze. That's not white. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it was the wrong color. It was too warm. White. All right. Which one? This one? The only thing I want to do to that one is um, just play with the iridescence a little bit. It's not as iridescent as that one. But it still has... Oh, thanks. It looks shiny. Yeah, it does look shiny. I like that part. Yeah, I don't dislike it. I'm just saying it's missing a, a little element. Okay, so that's starting to do what I want it to do. And now I can just really delicately, I can work around this camera. That's really bothering me. Um, draw some of these lighter patterns back on top. Because they probably wouldn't show up too well against um, that previous value. But now, My hand blocking your camera list, Mujin. Uh, so I think I'm going to show us like uh, every once in a while. It's, it's like, so get my hand out of the way this way. Is that better? Uh, that's really good. <laughs> so I'm dodging this camera and I'm holding my hand awkwardly for this camera. <laughs> Cameras are ruling my life right now. You probably need an overhead camera. That would be good. And I'm not sure how you would break that up. But... Well, I've got drop ceilings. I imagine it could hook up something like that. That would that would free up my painting technique a lot because right now it's really annoying dodging the camera. Mo a lot of that is just simply because my my laptop with my laptop um, not starting, I have to use the desktop to put the YouTube camera on, which means was it has to be on this. Already in that area? What's that? Was your desktop already in the area? It, it, yeah, it's always there. Okay, it's, so you didn't have to lug it somewhere else? Well, that wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but yeah, it's all set up here. 
I do I do more serious computing on that with um, like Photoshop and Word and all that and publisher and stuff like that. But um, the uh, the camera usually can just plug into this nondescript corner, and I'm still painting around it a little bit. But this is this is a lot more difficult. Like if I move my arm at all, I bump the camera. Do you need a pointer? Um, no, I think I just uh, work on the big shapes first. That sounds like the right idea. Yeah, I'll just uh, start to work on that. Otherwise, I'll never get there. Right? Well, no painting ever really has to go beyond what you see when you squint. Yeah. This yeah, painting. Yeah, th this painting is a high detail painting. It was always going to be a high detail painting with uh, basket weaves and lace tablecloths and stuff. But yeah, and I think uh, in my uh, So yeah. I have a feeling that once you get started, it'll look a little awkward at first. And then if you just keep on going, it'll start to harmonize. And then, um, then it gets easier.
<laughs> I lost my YouTuber again. Might have been a different one, but um, I didn't advertise this until really last minute. Which wasn't really by design. I just didn't get to it. Some people, they, they are not very patient about how long it takes to do anything. Well, so I don't... My friend asked me how long it will normally take, and they said, oh, then I won't even start. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you're right. But when it comes to, like, watching a demo online, I'm not sure I'd want to watch for tiny details for three straight hours. I, I, like, I get that. I just wanted to record this whole thing so that when I speed it up and it's just I invite people to join me, it's not necessarily even like a watching and for a demo purposes, it's more just like for inviting people to join me. Yeah, but I mean, some people are not even uh, going to start a game, which takes a few hours. True. But, you know, we were just talking about, like, balancing it with something like, uh, you know, Hollow Prima, where you can have just a little bit more fun with it. Although I know a lot of people that wouldn't think Hollow Prima is fun. <laughs> I do. You know, <laughs> did you watch on Friday? Did, did you watch on Friday? Yeah, I did the figure with Crayola crayons. What? Crayola crayons. What is that? Children's, uh, oh. children's like really waxy. Um, I don't know, just like what children draw with in grade school, really. Okay. Some people call them crowns. I've never understood that, but oh, it's ah. Okay. I mean, being that I was using a highly unprofessional medium. Uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> uh, no, there happened to be a, a box of, of crayons at the school and somebody said, oh, that, that's your challenge. Do crayons. I was like, yep. Okay, let's do it. But yeah, it's really super waxy. There's not a whole lot of pigment. So it's really difficult to build up especially with any kind of speed and um yeah it got there eventually i'm not gonna call it my best drawing but another fun challenge they're not supposed to be easy <laughs> some of them are easier than others and some of them are more enjoyable than others but this one wasn't so bad No. Okay. Yeah. It was really pretty. Why, thank you, Liz. Uh, I mean, it was live on um, YouTube. The Instagram kept cutting out on me, so I was just really grateful I even had people at the end. But um, yeah, YouTube went all the way through. It had a copyright infringement on it just because we were playing music in the background. Uh, and I think I got rid of it, so you might be able to watch it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you. I was able to... There's going to be section, segments that I mute, but again, I mean, I don't know if I can hold people's attention for that long. So you can just fast forward through it mostly. <laughs> Usually it's difficult for me to watch this. Whenever I finish work, you already finished. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. At eight? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. I, uh, yeah, I, again, it's just a matter of like, I set it up and I'm grateful for whoever can make it, and it's totally fine.
we're gonna we had one idea to where if like it was a discipline type challenge we're gonna set me up with a shot collar and every time i mess up with the uh with the challenge i get zapped that will get some viewers <laughs> I imagine that would be a real popular one. Unless, you know, I'd really disappoint them though if I if I did it perfectly. So the What's that? So you gotta mess up once in a while. No way. I'm gonna try my best. I don't wanna get shocked. But the one that popped into my mind was uh, that I had to go back to the palette after every brush stroke. So if I accidentally took two, I'd get zapped. But I can't think of any others. Like if anybody has any ideas, I'd be happy to hear. But... Yeah, I'll think about that. Or like uh, verticals only, like when I did that paintings, uh, I did one that was horizontal only and one that was vertical only. Every brush stroke had to be uh, either, you know, every brush stroke had to be vertical for that whole painting. Yeah, I'm, that looks like it would be hard to do. I think I did it, but I, I also didn't have anybody really kind of scrutinizing whether I did it perfectly or not. So, like, if we revisited that one, that could be a, a shot color one. Um, like I said, single brush strokes only. I don't know. I, I'd have to think about that. I have been thinking about it. Those are the only like three I could come up with. We've already done those, but I don't know. Some people think I can't repeat challenges. I don't, I don't see why that's a bad thing. Let me know when it gets to be 11.30, please. Okay. That way, I'll have it in my, you know how you always need to do that one last thing? That usually takes me past three hours. So if I start that process at 11.30, I would end on time. Tired. Yeah, then I'm going to look up the table cloths, but then I start working on apples with the <laughs> That happens. Yeah, I know yeah, that one. Now I'm going to look up the cloths. <laughs> I know that one well. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get to that any bit, any minute now. Three hours later. <laughs> well, I mean, with oil painting, I don't know. I guess any medium, really. You, I don't know. You just have a certain look in mind that you want to get to, so you just kind of keep paint, painting away until you get there. So, so it might still fully be in my mind to do whatever it is that I told people I wanted to do, but I, I needed to get this section looking right first, you know, type thing. So this shell is getting a little bit more three-dimensional and then I can put my little red dots in. And then it'll just be a matter of playing it by ear to see what else it needs. But um, I, I'm encouraged by it, this background shell. I gotta do more with the lace, or sorry, the basket, definitely a lot more with the lace. This, I feel like it still needs more work. 
it's kind of doing what it's supposed to do with uh, the iridescence, but it would be nice to get the highlights brighter. And, you know, right now they're already a little bit too white. So I'd like to like to get those subtle pinks and uh, greens in there, but that would darken it. So I've, I have a feeling that the, the right solution is just to have or glaze the whole thing dark and then um, then those those greens and pinks would look bright enough without being pure white, which is kind of dead. You know, it won't have the nice color to it. So that's the game plan on that. And um, then that would be pretty close. I got to work on the shadows more. I need to rearrange the, the basket and the shell to get my webbing of light going through the basket projecting onto the shell again. I lost that, and if I got up here, I'd be bumping over cameras where I'd have to move everything around. So I'm going to do that some other time. It's like I said, I'm, I'm totally imprisoned by cameras right now. <laughs> Can't even get my full range of movement in my like brushwork because of the cameras. Awkward. Yeah, this painting is probably at what, like hour like 20 or something? Maybe even more. So yeah, people people get a little surprised sometimes when I'll tell them like a highly detailed painting could be like 60, 70 hours. I know artists that spend a lot longer than that. Depends on really how detailed you like to go, how complicated you like to go, how big. You know, there's a lot of factors that can go into it. Sometimes those little miniatures take forever and they're tiny, but they have to be so precise. The lace is going to look like I'm being precise, but it's not, not so much. It's only going to be precise in that there's a genuine, general kind of pattern that's similar to what I'm looking at. It's definitely going to be mine by the end. And then like this started to get a little automatic by the time I'm over here. I'm going to be just kind of in cruise control. If it's anything like the other seven or eight times I've done it.
This is important because there's still another round of glazing at least on top that I want to do. And then, um, you know, you might have to get a little bit of rebalance as more things develop. So it would be good to get it at least close. And I needed a break from those dots anyway. But there's other fish to fry. This I this I had to wait just because it I don't it doesn't have the pattern that I like. This I could work on a bit. I could just use just a tiny bit more work with getting the highlights a little softer on the edges and more varied. Maybe a little bit more color in there. But it's, it's close. This clo this shell is pretty close. I don't see it anymore. There, and the original setup had a little shell that was hanging over the basket on this side. I think that would be nice. Let me get that back. Um, the surgeon shell, the dots are pretty close. They just need another round of glazing and then the, you know, finer details on it. So this painting's coming together. Got hours and hours of lace tablecloth to do. But not near the finish line, but it's progress. Yeah, when I did that, um, that first video, the lace tablecloth, I, uh, I did record the whole thing. I only did the uh, video for just the lace though. This is, uh, 
this has a lot of detail in a lot of places. So this this it's gonna be a lot of editing. It's gonna be uh, highly sped up, of course. I'll just dump over it just talking about it, but it's gonna be a lot of work. Hopefully it'll pay off. I'm not looking for anything huge out of these videos, just you know, just develop a brand, let people know I exist. We definitely know you exist. Well, you do, because you've met me. <laughs> Talking about, you know, globally, you know, not to be famous or anything, but it does help to have a name in art for sure. We were just talking about, like, you were saying that Sergeant, that it wasn't your favorite Sergeant. Let's put it that way. It wasn't that it was bad, but it was like, you know, when you, when you have expectations. Well, that works both ways because I've, I've seen plenty of art contests. I don't want to name any names, but um, where their name totally carried the prize and nothing to do with the painting. Like, their, their, their painting was one of, I, this has happened several times, but there's one that really pops into my mind that I really highly respect the artist and I don't really want to, you know, make fun of them or anything, but like this painting did not represent them well. It wasn't a very great painting. It was good. It was ambitious enough, but there are so many other things in this show that were spectacular. But his name carried so much weight that it was really the name that won the prize. It wasn't the artwork. And so, you know, with Sergeant, it was probably like that, too. It's like, this is a sergeant. You know, even though it wasn't his best painting, it's like, this is a sergeant, you know. But I don't, I don't really want to put up a dog in a contest and win just because my name. I don't really want that. But, I don't know, it would be nice to have yeah, a little bit more notoriety. Well, I think that um, already people that come to the sh shows at the Shore School, at least, you know, a lot of people come looking for your work, specifically. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, well, I think that is... Well, I mean, I'll tell you, for these last eight years, I mean, I've done some serious paintings, but not nearly as much. A lot of studies. So this is a nice, this is a nice ambitious project. It's been a while. Other than those commissions like O'Malley and the girl with the dog and, you know, a few others. I did a landscape commission. Yeah, somehow I think you need more visibility with the, with the um, commissions like the O'Malley one because there's a lot of stuff happening right now with Portraits. I wanted more notoriety through it. It just didn't happen. <laughs> but I mean, uh, maybe, you know, reach out to the governor's mansion and yeah. just kind of drop it in because they might, you know, they might not really know where to look, even though it happened. You know, maybe he's not the one making the decisions. You know what I mean? No, I don't think it's the O'Malley's. I just think, uh, I mean, part of it was that the commissions were done so long after the administration. So I think that's... Yeah, I'm saying, it, you know, I know what you're saying, but... I think that was part of it. But, I mean, it was... I mean, you were there. I mean, it was really well attended, and the people there were so... Awesome, yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to fault anybody. It's just saying that, you know, I hoping to kind of build something off of that. And part of it's definitely me and not, you know, I guess I'm not the strongest at promoting myself. But it used to go easy because I would just be a part of a ton of shows, just show after show after show after show. That's, that was enough promotion. But I don't do that really anymore. Now I'm back. I'm doing these videos and 
getting advertisements out and stuff like that. Yeah, you're getting a lot of stuff done. Too much. I'm busy all the time. Yeah, you are. You I'm are. trying to have energy for my boys and you know, all that jazz. Fish? Oh, that like metal thing? Yeah, because you know you were talking about um those riddles. Oh yeah. The, the chain mail. Right. And that was in there in that fish and that specific fish. Yeah, it was just it just made me think of that. Right. No, I know what you mean. That was a good looking metal fish. Yeah, that's at the Walters. Okay. Years. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, if you're making up your own clues, that it would be, I think the way I would approach it maybe is to take a picture of what you want to make a clue about and then figure out some good clues. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I don't know how to really go about it, but it sounds like fun. Like, it's, yeah, scavenger hunt. Yeah, something like that. How'd that, how'd that riddle run, uh, that riddle go? It was like, um, gosh, that was one that we did memorize. I'm not, I'm blanking. Yeah, I, I remember the chain mail, because you said that was, that was a scale. Well, that, that's the last part of it. It goes, um. Never thirsty, ever drinking, all in mail, never clinking. Yeah, all in mail, never clinking, okay. Yeah. And what else? Um, yeah. These are riddles in the Lord of the Rings, right? Riddles in the dark, yes. Riddles in the dark means that he was down... He got lost. They they got in a skirmish with goblins in the misty mountains, and he got separated from the rest and got lost in the by like falling down into a ravine that was just like way in the deep of the mountain. That's just like pitch black, hard to see anything, and he stumbled upon the ring. And then Gollum came out to meet him. He had a he has a little little tiny boat that he goes out to in the middle of the lake. And he met Bilbo there. And then uh, Bilbo made a deal with him. If he wins the game of riddles, then Gollum has to show him a way out of the mountain. And if Bilbo loses, Gollum gets to eat him. And I think Gollum never really intended to lose. He's going to slip on the ring and eat him anyway. But um, Bilbo kind of cheated too. And um, Gollum, yeah, Gollum realized later that he didn't have the ring. And so that factors into the fellowship too in that Gollum never really gave up trying to find the ring, and then he got captured by Sauron. And in torturing Gollum, he just let out the words Shire and Baggins, and that's how the whole story begins. Like the these ring wraiths that were uh, kind of kings of men that were corrupted by the ring. Well, they each had their own ring, but Sauron had the, the ring that ruled them all. And so those ring wraiths went looking for Bilbo in the Shire, because that was the only clue they had from torturing 
Oh. You know, I think that um, it's going to be a really great memory for him. I mean, I, I remember my dad reading it to me when I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, I just love it. And, I love the whole idea of it. Well, what I find it fascinating is that it's a tough book, and that's really keeping track of it big time. But Ollie is interested in hearing it through through Hans. Not necessarily through me. Like, we do our little recaps in the car ride to school. Right. Like, okay, what did we just read last night? And then I would ask him a, a, a few little questions. Nothing, not, not like a quiz or anything, but happy to fill in blanks. But he, he remembers it really good. That's terrific. And like I said, it's a tough read. It's a lot of dialect. Tolkien was pretty amazing in that he didn't just write characters. He wrote whole languages and whole histories and whole like maps and like these are really well thought out. It kind of obsessively almost like he has a whole he has a whole other book of backstories. I don't think he actually put that book together, but the fact that it existed and that somebody could compile it for a book is pretty amazing. It is. It is. And they're such long stories, you know? I mean, it's such a... Yeah, it's very long. Pages. Yes, it's a lot. Well, yeah. The Two Towers is the shortest of the four, I think. And uh, the Hobbit is is barely shorter. Fellowship is a little longer than that, and then the longest one is the, the Fellowship of the Ring, or no, Return of the King. I mean, but the um, not by much. It's funny though, because they when they made the movies, they they made the Hobbit in three parts, but then they added a bunch of stuff. It's like, come on, just stick to the books. So they they added a bunch of stuff. But I'm guessing mostly because they turned a single book into a three-part movie, like six hours of of movie. No, nine, not six. But yeah, he's into it. We're probably going to do Star Wars next, unless he changes his mind, which he's totally fine to do. Yeah, it's really neat. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Love it. Well, I'm into it too. Like I said, I mean, my dad read them to me when I was. Probably about his age. But it's neat though, because he he does his own reading right before we read that book. So he has his little kitty books and you know, I help him through the reading part of that. And then we read two towers. And sometimes he, he wants to read some of the the two tower or the uh, the Hobbit book, the fellowship books, and he'll just do like a line or two, and then we'll go back to it. It's nice. My boys. So Ollie, Ollie usually wants something read to him too, but just he doesn't have the attention span for a epic story like that. <laughs> Epic in length. I mean, the story is interesting enough, but it's just really long, and it goes long periods of time of just pure description, like talking about the glade and the trees and the flowers and stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like super descriptive. Yeah, I gave him the choice between. 
that and um, Harry Potter and because we have all the we have all the books from Andy's daughter. She was into it when she was young. So we have all those, and um, I mentioned you know the Narnia series, and a couple other people made suggestions. He wants to do Star Wars next. So. Sounds like a good choice. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a great choice. So look at all this like ribbing in here, and then I'm gonna put these little red stripes on top. I'm just trying to get all the structure in there. So this is right now that's the most complete part of the painting. And I'm guessing with those little stripes it'll be pretty close to done. Everything's an adjustment. You step back from the painting and see what it needs. Really complicated show. It's really spiky. Oh. Oh, so what next? I'm gonna I'm gonna glaze this show. Am I still in the camera here? Yeah, I am. So I'm gonna glaze it with some pinks and some greens. Of course, I overdo it at first, always. And then I'll scale it back. No, that, that time riddle was but some of the other ones are pretty good. I'm glad they didn't use all of them in the movie, though. It's, uh, some of them aren't really that great. Some of the uh, Bilbo ones aren't that great. The, um, the one I was upset about in the movie was uh, that they shortened the time riddle. And the time riddle is awesome. It's like one of the best riddles I've heard. Can you say that one again? The time riddle? Yeah. Oh, say it or repeat what I was saying? No, uh, say the, the riddle. It's all things it devours, birds, beasts, trees, flowers, gnaws iron, bites steel, and grinds hard stones to meal, slays kings, ruins towns, and brings all high, or beats all high mountains down. Wow. Which, like, when I do a little discussion, it's like, well, I was saying, it's like, well, you know, those mountains we drive over, this is to be the tallest mountains in the world, <laughs> the, Himal the uh, Appalachians. It was like time beat them down. <laughs> so not only a good rhyme, but pretty poignant at that. His were really dark. Bilbo's were a little lighter. So like a box without hinges, key or a lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. That's egg. It's, you know, nothing like too frightening or whatever. But what was one of um, Gollum's other rhymes? It was, uh, riddles. It was um, cannot be. Cannot be heard, cannot be felt, cannot be. No, that's not it. Felt and smelt is right. Cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind <laughs> hills and under. What? Is that air? Uh, it's no, it's darkness. Oh, that's right. Um, lies behind behind stars and under hills. 
Gosh, I can't remember anything right now. I think I said light in class, and you said no, it's, it's the opposite. I, yeah, it's darkness. <laughs> Somebody got it right. Paul got it right. But I knew this one off the top of my head, and I'm, I'm just struggling right now. I don't know why. Um, I probably know why. I could guess. I'm tired. <laughs> um, cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelled. It's behind stars and under hills. Gosh, what's that line in between? It comes before and ends after. Ends joy, kills laughter. That's it. So yeah, Gollum's, Gollum's riddles are really dark. Well, of course, that one is actually darkness. So <laughs> yeah, that worked on that worked on multiple levels. <laughs> but his yeah, his arm is cheery. Let's put it that way. There are 30 white riders on a red hill. First they champ, then they stamp, then they stand still. That's another one of Bilbo's. Teeth. 30 white riders on a red hill. First they champ, then they stamp, then they stand still. Teeth. This one, this shell is getting pretty close. I just want I want some of those little colors and I want the highlights to be just a little bit more erratic. They were a little regimented before and they didn't they didn't quite do it. So I'm using just about pure white right now, but I might do another just very faint final glaze to not have it be white, but have it have this little iridescence that I want. I already got a little bit of pink and green into the edges and um, a little bit of refinement, not much. But I want these highlights just a little bit less the same, like all the same. And I think it's actually harder for people to paint random than it is to paint very systematic things. That's why you'll see people make perfectly symmetrical trees or, um, I don't know, other subjects where it's just like, or clouds, you know, and as soon as you do that, then it looks like a man-made thing instead of a natural thing. Even if you're spying this cloud that is perfectly puffball, I, I still wouldn't paint it that way. Even if it's like that in real life, because it just doesn't look, doesn't look natural enough.
Yeah, I like the colors a lot more now. So just little tweaks. The shell behind it needs a lot of work, but I gotta I gotta completely redo the setup to get it back to where I want it. So I'm gonna skip that one tonight. And I'm gonna um, maybe work on this one for a little while. Again, I'm letting that set up so I can glaze it and then put the little detail dots. This is gonna be a billion little hatches that I'm gonna do all on video recording, but nobody needs to sit through that. Except for me, unfortunately. <laughs> I, need a, I need a studio lackey to do a million little dots. Of course, I'd need to pay him for that, which totally suck, but. <laughs> Well, the thing, the danger with that is that maybe they couldn't do as good a job, though. Well, and that it's a pretty important painting. It's a pretty important painting, and I, I want, I want to get all the glory to myself and not have to dole it out to anybody. That's right. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> no, I didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty particular with it. But the thing is, it's like there's so, there's so, so much you can get away with in that pattern. Has to be somewhat. It has to be somewhat consistent. So, I don't know. It's. I've, I've gotten through it, but I think I've gotten through it before. I'll get through it again. <laughs> That's that's only that's only stage one. So that's using only one value, just simply drawing the pattern, and then um, then I go back in with glazes to make it turn and have a little bit of you know character. But right now it's just a matter of, of design. It's not. It's just a lot of flat little hatches. And I, I do that on purpose. It's not the only way to do it, but it's the way I like to do it. Yeah. So would you say, um, not to quantify it, but like three to five hours? What? To get, the work? To get the flat stuff in? To do the, the tablecloth. No. We're talking at least like 12 to 15. Really? That's a lot. It is a lot, it's, but it's... It's it's a lot of little busy things. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a yeah. Maybe I'll put a timer on it. <laughs> I mean, just a, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. So that one's really close. This one's really close. That's ah. Uh, I don't know. I keep adjusting it. Looking okay. I just uh, just really want to make those greens and pinks work. So I want enough. I want enough contrast for the highlights, which to me don't stand out enough. But I don't really want to darken all the greens and the pinks. Right. And it needs contrast, but something's got to give. I just can't go any brighter. So I'm gonna have to go darker, which. Again, you, know, you just have to do what you got to do. And so uh, I'll just keep toying with it. I'm not disappointed. I just got to figure it out. It's uh, iridescence is a pretty difficult trick to pull off, I think. And I've done it. I've done it plenty of times. Fish and with um, shells and with I put like shimmer and like a little bit of iridescence and that that painting with the mermaid I did. Although that was mostly about backlight from that moon. That was that was the main trick I was trying to pull off on that one.
All right, so that's getting more dynamic. The highlights could still use a little bit more diversity, I think. I think they're all kind of the same stripe. But I think this is about, about there. I mean, the, the stripes do all line up on top of each other. It's just they, they all have very unique shapes. I'm just I'm modifying with pinks and greens, so it's going to make it better on the color level at the same time I do the drawing. So if it's 11.30, then I don't think I should start anything that would need a lot of time. These, these sittings are going to keep getting slower paced and slower paced until the detail is finished. So I should probably do. You know what I should work on on the side? I should keep recording this and keep doing it, but for on, de on days where I'm inviting people to watch, I should work on that tiger. We have the animal show coming up. That'd be a good one. You mean the tiger with uh, Monica? Yeah. Okay. It's right behind me. I keep looking at it like I really got to finish that on time. This painting is taking up all my time right now. That and that and you know just like little portrait studies and stuff. Well, if I finish my deer, then I'll have that, and then I'll have the swan. Well, I'm not going to be a part of the contest, but I always like to show up for the school. Plus, an opportunity to do so. I, I like painting animals. It's a nice change of pace. But, with all luck, maybe I'll be painting up another professional portrait. I hope. That'd be nice. What that you mean? Or no. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Of the... Oh, with the, uh, the contest? Yeah. Have you heard from Art at the mill? Oh, was I supposed to? No. Um, I just wondered if anybody's heard yet. Uh... I looked in my email today, I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't some contests only tell you if you're in, they don't tell you if you're not. Um, well, I'd say that's kind of rare, but still. I would imagine at least one of the five would get in. But I guess you can't, you can't always know. Yeah, I'm liking this shell now. I think, see, these highlights stand out big time, but they're against a darker value. So I hope I don't, I, I don't want to go that dark on this one. I don't know. It needs more. These highlights are super bright, but they're pink and green and really cool looking. Are you talking about the, um, the translucent shell? Uh, not translucent, iridescent, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I figured you meant that. I didn't need to correct. I'm sorry, I didn't need to correct that. Yeah, I don't mind. You, you're right to take that. Yeah, I shouldn't work on this one because I'm painting so awkwardly right now. Just reaching funny at it. <clears throat> Well, what would that look like if I went a tiny bit darker? Let's find out. 
So. Bill is not in the picture. What's that? The, the whole show is not in the photo. This is not right yeah, here? Now it is. Now it is. Now it is. But you could see that other one just fine as I was looking it up. Okay, that's good. Need a softer brush. Okay. So if I were to go darker, I just don't want to lose all these greens and pinks. I mean, again, if I overdo it, then I just glaze it again. Build it back up again. Half paste, glaze, brush strokes, build it up again. <laughs> yeah, I don't, there's really no limit to how many times you can do that. At least not in my experience. So if I go this dark, how it's getting brighter. Yeah. I don't know. Guess it's still looking bright enough. That's what I was worried about. I didn't want to go any darker because I didn't. I, I like how kind of creamy and uh, it's not light, but it's not really that dark either. I think two is I've got to I've got to just kind of sit with it for a little bit and come back with my first impression rather than judging it right now where I'm getting these darker richer colors. Remember when I started this, this had big time colors in it. And I I half pasted it back and it was looking great. It's just I can't get the highlights to read quite as intense as I want. I mean I know. Know what it needs, it just needs contrast, but um, it's taking just a little while to get exactly what I want. I see some subtle yellows too. I don't really have a whole lot of those yet. All right, so you did a great job telling me when it was 11.30. Is it almost 11.45 now? One minute. One minute. All right. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah
again, I was running out of tooth because the crayons kind of, they're, it's like all wax. So they, uh, they really fill in the paper and then, then to put that next layer on top, you can't do it with any sort of opacity. So if I wanted to like put a highlight on top of a, a deep iris, forget about it. And so I would solvent it back and then try to put it back on. Fortunately, an eraser helped a little bit. It, um, it could take a little bit of that layer off. And by the end, it was starting to peel up. And uh, by that, it was just like leaving these little kind of goobers everywhere that I'd have to scrape off, you know, while I'm sitting there trying to do the detail phase. So yeah, it was, that was a good one. You mean kind of like pilling? Yeah, it was pilling. Yeah, yeah, I've had that before. So yeah, good, good, um, good challenge, got through it. Uh, people seem to have liked it. That or they're just being really, really nice. <laughs> I think we had 12 people. Did we? 11 or 12. Yeah, usually I know by the end of the day, because I know what I paid the model and then I see what's in my pocket, but, um, Steven paid me today, so I think my count was a little off, but yeah, it was a good group. I usually don't care. I don't, I don't do it to make money. I, I, I don't like it when there are a lot of people there. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah, it's just good energy. The, the only thing um, that makes it hard is that when maybe we're like, 20 minutes in and then a lot of people show up. We have no plan for how we're going to fit them in the space. That can be tough. Well, we try, you know, we yeah. try to let it open. We always get it. We always figure it out. Yeah, Tatiana usually shows up late, and she knows just what to do. Yeah. But um, uh, who's that? Who's that guy that joined us this time? Um, I got his name. As a matter of fact, I got his email. I'm horrible so with names. Got him to the um, to the mailing list. Was something like I'll think of it in a minute. But he seemed like he. He was eager to take some classes. Yeah, he said not this week, but uh, yeah, that'd be good. Seemed like he was really nice. He was. And the man, the other man that came last week, he didn't come back, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But I hope he does come back. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, people come, people go. I don't think there's anybody. I was just like, oh, thank goodness that person's gone. I don't. I can't think of one. No, he, he, yeah, but the guy's name was Everett. You don't want to see Everett again? No, no, no. I like Everett him. Is the the young man that came last night? I'm just kidding. Because oh. that's what I just said. Is like I don't think I've ever had anybody that I was just like, thank goodness they're gone. And then you <laughs> then you chimed in with his name. I think you're right. I think it was Everett. Yeah, he, yeah, he was real nice. I think uh, once there was a guy that keeps talking about why do we need to learn how to draw things accurately while we you can use the projector to do that. Um, I'm glad he never shows up again. <laughs> a lot of people have that attitude. Yeah, well, I mean, the short answer is that if you're using the projector to let it do all the drawing for you, then you can't draw. And if you can't draw, you can't 
really make things up. You're just beholden to whatever photograph you have. And if that's satisfying for you, who am I to say, you know, that that's not good? You know, we, we are at a, the Schuler School is a school of skills. So tracing isn't allowed because you're not going to build the skills. But there's a lot of professionals that trace and transfer and project and all that stuff. I mean, there'd be no way of banning it, even if you felt like you should. I mean, I, I don't even know. I mean, at the end of the day, what does your painting look like? Did you create it? Nowadays, it's going to be really tough because who knows if it's going to be generated by AI or if it's going to be done or if it's your own artwork, you know? Because right now, you could just say to, you know, whatever, you can even go on Canvas and uh, canvas.com and just say, hey, generate me a, a dog on Jupiter. And they'll, you know, I don't know. I just made that up. But you'll get an image like right away. <laughs> I wouldn't think that would be my artwork. But I imagine that's going to be a problem coming up. Right. Well, I find it, you know, the joy for me is the figuring it out part. That's why, you know, the lace is only satisfying for a little while and then it's just boring. Because then it's just busy work. I already have it kind of figured out, and it's it just takes forever. Um, so it's not it's not the it's not the million brush strokes part of it. It's the monotony. But again, I I can't complain too much. I I've, I've done it how many times already? <laughs> if it was that bad, I wouldn't do it again. All right, so I was playing around with deeper values in here. I like them. You know, it does make the highlight brighter. And um, the pattern's getting more and more intricate. There's some really structural things that I, I really need to focus on to get it more accurate in here. But I don't know. I've been painting for three and a half hours. I was tired in the first place and I got to figure out how to get my computer to work again. So I might just call it, um, cause it's around midnight now, right? Yeah. So do you want me to take a look at your painting? Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Hans. You're welcome. I'm going to sign off. Okay. All right. Well, well, have a good night. Okay, let me um, let me put this final brush stroke down, and then I've got to be able to get the text right. Or are you holding it up? Uh, I'm sending. Sending it on text. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I did most of the pattern in big shapes already. I'm working on those that is like trees. Which is a bit difficult, but I guess I'll just do as much as I can. Okay. So let me take a look. I think it looks better than what I expect. Well, <laughs> like I said, I've been totally imprisoned by cameras. <laughs> if I move any in any direction, I would bump one of the two of them. <laughs> it's not a good way to paint. <laughs> I've got to get a better system. I think you should have to figure that out. Well, it wasn't a problem before when they were all big shapes, but now they're all tiny shapes. So it makes a big deal. All right, so I'm going to end Zoom and I'll look at your text. Is that cool? Well, actually, no, I don't need to. I'll just, I know what I'm doing. I have to use my brain. All right, so the lace, I think the lace is coming well. 
I can definitely tell where the lace is uh, a single layer as opposed to when it's overlapping the rest of it. I think you'll need to turn some of the shapes of shadows just a little bit more. Well, all along that left hand side, to me, feels like it ought to start turning away from the light. Um, on the left side of the, that topmost apple and the one on the table right in front of the lace, the one that's sitting on top of the lace, I think all that needs to turn a little bit more towards shadow. And then you'll get that gray light bouncing off the cloth. So it's just a matter of getting those shadows in. Now, um, see if this is true in your photo, but um, it looks like almost the lace gets thin near the apple and then gets bigger as it cascades away from you. So it could be a matter of how it's bundling, but near the apple, toward the middle of the painting, it maybe looks a little skinny compared to what it looks like when it's getting almost, you know, at the bottom of the painting. Okay. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, I'm cool. well, No, no, just, just double check. I mean, it's close. I mean, the first impression looks really good for the lace. So. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you're right. I, I can make it like a bit wider away and close to the apple. And, and when I say the first impression looks good, that's really, to me, the most important thing. The first impression is is how people judge paintings. And then they, you invite them in to see detail. So I meant that as a big compliment. Um, the, um, yeah, so just double check that thickness when you get toward the middle uh, with that apple on the table. Not the one on the far left, but the one in the middle. I draw the, uh, the, the, the part that was off the lace, I kind of make the shape incorrectly. That's why it makes the, the lace look smaller. It's super easy to do. I mean, it's super easy to do because you're concentrating on intricate things. You're not looking at the whole painting. So I think that's probably the chief reason why that stuff happens. But it's okay because it's oils. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I hope to see you soon. I you know, that that that's totally fine. And I'm happy to see you here. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when you get into tiny detail work, not much changes in the span of the class. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, you keep asking me, and then I'll say, oh, yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, and uh, see you tomorrow, I guess, next week? Yeah, sounds good. All right, well, good night. Okay, so here's some of the things I did today. This is all just, just block in work. Those dots will get much more complicated. So you can see that they have little, uh, it doesn't focus, it's super blown out. But um, these dots over here are gonna get glazed into shadow and then they're gonna get little cast shadows. These dots, um, they almost have a little dot in the middle of them, and that's going to make them more complicated. These might get a little half paste to bring them together, so they're, the dot will be there, but it'll be super subtle. I put a lot of these little ribs in here and made it a little smoother, um, and I got some highlights to pop because I glazed the whole thing first. 
I did a little bit more work on the lace, but that was just kind of the stuff I was doing before nine. Um, just because <laughs> I'm not going to go live for oh, a billion little dots or little hatches. Uh, I did work on the getting the highlights to be brighter on this shell with the iridescence, and I added just a little bit more color doing so. And this one I think is pretty near complete. I got a lot more color in there. I got the highlights to be brighter through glazing. The shell behind it I couldn't work on because it's missing a major element that I want is that uh, what the original setup did was had the, the slats from the basket project little, like a checkerboard pattern on here. And I think that's super cool. So I'm gonna have to mess with the, the setup to do that again. But I don't really want to do that until I've really solidified some of these other things. So um, I, I put that one off today. But um, coming together, and I'm so glad you joined me and uh, you're looking at the video. Remember, if you, if you like what I'm doing and like my content, uh, I don't always do these uh, really intricate uh, detail paintings. A lot of times I'll do loose a la prima. Uh, and I, I bounce between still life and portrait and animals and um, really have a lot of fun mixing it up. So uh, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. Um, and uh, feel free to shoot me some comments and ask me questions. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll respond as best I can. So uh, have a good night. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you the next time. Yeah.